Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brendan Place. This is Total Extreme Wrestling for our All Elite Wrestling Save. First of all, apologies for my voice. I am currently sick, but we're going to power through this. This is the show that will follow up Double or Nothing. Big news about this episode. We will be debuting Rampage. I couldn't wait any longer. I, I wanted to see how... Are we going to make Rampage work? So that's the third hour of television on TNT. We have signed a new deal with TNT. I had to play around with the settings a little bit to make that happen. But basically, we're going to keep Dark, we're going to keep Dynamite, and we're going to add Rampage. So we're going to have two hours of Dynamite, an hour of Dark, and one hour of Rampage. So that's four hours of booking we've got to do per week now. So there's going to be a lot to do. So I'm very intrigued to see how we're going to make this work. And we're going to figure it out on this episode. So we'll get to that later on in this one. But we're going to start things off with this week's edition of Dark. So let's jump straight into it. We do have a lot of storylines that we've uh, now created. Obviously coming off the uh, Double or Nothing pay-per-view. So we'll have a quick run through of these storylines before we get to Dark. Um, so we're going to do Christian versus Powerhouse Will Hobbs as our... Next little feud for Christian, more of a pit stop I suppose with Christian, you know he's beaten the veteran Dustin Rhodes, now he wants to make a statement against an up and coming star and that's going to be Will Hobbs, Mark Henry, Mark Henry of course is Will Hobbs' new manager, so that should be an interesting dynamic there. Um, Cody versus Sammy Guevara, we're going to make that one of the headline matches of our next pay view which of course will be Fighter Fest, Diamante and Brett Baker have been building towards this for a while, that's going to be for the women's title. We're going to do a bit of a tournament to determine who's going to face uh, MJF or John Marksley for the championship, depending on who is the champion at Fighter Fest. So an eight-man little tournament um, that will uh, give us a chance to have some of our top guys do something because I was kind of, before we had this tournament in place, a lot of our top stars were really not involved in anything at all, and I didn't really know what to put them in. So I figured this is something to give everyone to kind of focus on for a little bit and get us through some, uh, you know, a, tr a tricky stage because we're in this period where All Out is our next major show, but that's quite some time away, so we need to fill in a bit of time before we get there, so we don't want to give away our best stuff, but also we want to make sure we continue to have something good that's on TV. One last match will take place, MJF and John Moxley for the championship, and we're going to have this as the main event of our first ever Rampage show. So I figure, why not start off Rampage with a bang? So we'll get to that later on. So that will finish up this feud between these two. One last match between them. If whoever loses cannot challenge for the championship until that person has lost the championship. So if MJF defeats Moxley, well, Moxley can't have another title shot until MJF loses the belt and vice versa. Well, we were going to have a big feud between Park and Samoa Joe. So I've had to change plans there. Well, we're still going to have the match, but it's going to be a one and done. Um, we were, we did sign Samoa Joe to a contract because I was adamant he was coming to AEW. I thought, okay, WWE doesn't want him. Well, he's going to come back. To, he's going to come to AEW. I mean, where else is he going to go, right? Well, he goes back to NXT. So we can't replicate that in the game. But what we can do is, unfortunately, not have Samoa Joe on our roster anymore. So that's going to be a big blow to us because we actually had plans for Samoa Joe to be one of our headline baby faces going forward. So we have to cut those plans. But we're going to have Park versus Samoa Joe. Um, because we set it up at the pay-per-view, so we need to at least do it. Um, we'll have that for the TNT title, and then Samoa Joe will be done. So, a one-and-done situation, and then, well, I guess in this game, he'll be a free agent, but in real life, he's back in NXT, unfortunately. Um, the Good Brothers will take on Jurassic Express, and a tag team feud, and the Young Bucks and the Hardys, so this should be a good one for the tag titles as well. Um, so, I was going to do Young Bucks and uh, Lucha Bros, but we might hold off on that for a little while longer, because I feel like... We might have the Lucha Bros beat the Young Bucks for the titles. So we might give the Young Bucks one more feud with the Hardys this time as a way for the Hardys to put over a, a, one of our top tag teams, which of course is the Young Bucks. So, you know, we, we are kind of souring a little bit on the Hardys. They haven't been so great for us. So them utilizing some of that popularity they have and giving it to the Young Bucks might be the way to go. But those are some of the storylines we've got set. We need to add a few more, of course, especially another couple of women's storylines. But um, those are some of the preliminary matches that I've got planned at the moment until things change. But let's get straight into this week's edition of Dark. On the pre-show, we had Rio beat Killian King. Uh, Rio 41, King 19. Quick little win there for Rio. Awesome Kong was beaten by Serena D. 37 apiece by both women. 30 rated match. Uh, the Gun Club, they took on Private Party. The Private Party defeated the Gun Club. 44 rated match there. 
just to get Prime Party another win. And we had the Side L simming up with Top Flight to take on TNT and the acclaimed 8-man tag, 37-rated match. Matt Side L, really the only guy in the match that was going to do any good here. But um, we need to get some of these young tag teams just appearing more, just to, you know, getting some more matches just to try and improve their skills, basically. So this is one way we can go about that. All right, we open up the show with Park. He's got Death Triangle there with him as well. He's furious that Samoa Joe interrupted his celebrations at double or nothing. So we kick off this storyline that's going to be a very short one between Park and Samoa Joe. 69 rated promo from Park. Pretty good. We had Sonny, Kiss, and Joey Janela team up to take on Jurassic Express. Now, the team of Janela and Kiss, I think, is broken up in real life. Well, Sonny Kiss's contract is expiring pretty soon for us. So once Sonny Kiss's contract expires, uh, we probably won't renew it. So we, we don't really care about both these guys. So quite honestly, I, I, we could release both of them. But um, at least until we have them, we're going to have them put over some of our other teams. For example, Jurassic Express, who performed pretty well. Jungle Boy, great. Luchasaurus, pretty good. So both these guys are really doing well. They're pretty red hot at the moment for us, Jurassic Express. So 57 for the match. Don Callis is backstage and they're trying to get a hold of management. They want to talk to management over their loss against the Young Bucks. They want a rematch. Well, in comes Jurassic Express, who just had a big win and, you know, pretty much saying, look, guys, you lost fair and square. You know, if you want a rematch, you're going to have to earn it. And we want a rematch too. So kind of both teams here mingling here, confronting one another. So a bit of a way to start off this storyline between these two. So both teams wanting a rematch against the Young Bucks, well, they both have to earn it. So maybe they'll go through one another to try and do so. We had the Dark Order take on the Wingmen. So we figured out the name for this team of Nemeth, uh, Benoni, and JD Drake. And I know Peter Avalon's with the crew in real life as well. I'm tempted to add Peter Avalon into it, um, but I'd have to turn him heel, and he only recently turned Bayface not all that long ago. But um, yeah, apparently they're called the Wingman, so we've given them the correct name. Well, they still lost anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The Dark Order picked up the win here, 42 rated. We had Diamante. She cut a promo saying she's excited to get a championship opportunity against Britt Baker. 37 for that promo. Not too bad. And our main event was Eddie Kingston versus Jack Evans for 50, Kingston 53, and Jack Evans 42. So we're going to have Eddie Kingston in that Fighter Fest qualifying tournament that we talked about. So that eight-man tournament, Kingston's going to be in it. So I wanted to give him a win here just to give him a bit of momentum heading into that tournament. Post-match, Eddie Kingston says he's going to look to find some friends who will have his back, unlike the Lucha Bros. So he wants to find some real friends who aren't going to turn on him. So, subtle hint there of the future of Eddie Kingston, maybe looking to enter the tag team division. And I'm thinking Kingston and Moxley, I really like that tag team in real life. So I might look to implement it here in our TW game and add in the wild things. 61 for the promo, and it gives us, okay, not a bad show actually, 52 for the episode of Dark. All right, Dynamite is booked. Let's get straight into it on the pre-show. Serena Deeb and Layla Hirsch went one-on-one for 37. Serena 37, Layla 31, not too bad. Serena picked up the win. We had Brandy and Red Velvet hyping themselves up for 44, pretty decent. Cast Project, they lost to the Varsity Blondes for 34. Pillman Jr., 38, not bad. Christopher Daniels defeated Ryan Nemeth for 47, wanted to give Daniels a win, uh, just so he wasn't completely buried, but also, you know, just have a decent match with one of the lower card guys, and I think he did that. 47's pretty good. We have Mark Henry cutting a promo for Will Hobbs, saying that he's excited to be Will Hobbs' brand new manager. Well, agent, I suppose. And he says the sky is the limit for Will Hobbs. So 49. So good start there for Henry. You know, he's doing some good stuff with Will Hobbs, which is exactly what we're hoping for. All right, we opened up the show with Sting. He booked Moxley versus MJF for the debut of Rampage. MJF, of course, is absolutely furious about it and does not want to do it. 85 rated segment here, so Sting is back as the new, well, not as the new, but back in his role as the authority figure here at AEW, so good to have someone in that role back, you know, we kind of lost a bit of control, you know, not just in storyline sense, but also ourselves, it's always good to have someone you can rely on to kind of book the matches, and it's an easy way to kind of get things happening, a bit of structure on, on TV, so Sting absolutely able to fill that role for us and do it at a very high level, 85 rated promo is excellent. Next up, Will Hobbs defeated Peter Avalon for 45, so you can see really pushing Will Hobbs here 
for um, the time being. You know, we're really going to try and get Will Hobbs from that mid 30s range into 40, 45, 50. We want to get him there. We want to make him a star. So that starts right now. So he's got Mark Henry, who did some good ring works, uh, a good work ringside. So that's great. Um, and Peter Avalon actually has quite a lot of popularity, so not a bad match here. Will Hobbs, 47, is really, really good. It gives me a lot of hope that he can actually, you know, live up to my expectations. Post-match, Christian Cage comes out and says he's unimpressed by Will Hobbs. Mark Henry says, look, Christian, if you, if you think you can beat him, why don't you do it? How about you two have a match? And, uh, well, Christian... Didn't give the answer right there and then, but um, we are setting up for a match between these two. So Christian obviously coming off a big win against Dustin Rhodes, thinks he's so great now. He wants to try and outwork everyone. Well, here's one of the up and coming stars in AEW. Why don't you try to outwork him? 62 rated segment there, pretty good. Diamante defeated the Bunny for 32. Not quite enough popularity here to get past the penalty here. Uh, as we're still penalized for having this match on the main show. But Diamante 39, the Bunny 38. I thought, look, we're trying to push Diamante. We're trying to get her in a position where she can challenge for the Women's Championship and do it successfully. So we've got to start having her feature a little bit more on Dynamite and, and, and big match scenarios. So we tried it. It didn't quite work, but I think it was worth the shot. You know, we can... I think she's very close to being able to compete on Dynamite um, without being penalized, but maybe not quite this week. She picked up the win, of course. Awesome Kong tried to beat down Diamante post-match and she failed. Diamante able to fend her off and get away. Britt Baker's obviously furious. Awesome Kong, she's been losing week after week. She's been terrible lately. Well, Baker's had enough. She tells Awesome Kong that she is fired and no longer needs her services as her bodyguard or backup or whatever you want to call it. So one way we can you know, get rid of Awesome Kong out of this kind of storyline situation. She's been helping Britt Baker. Well, no more. Awesome Kong, no longer needed. All right, Sammy Guevara, this is his big time to shine. Now it's instead of having Chris Jericho do all the talking for him. Well, it's Sammy Guevara cutting the promo this week. Jericho was there with him as well as the inner circle, but this time it's Guevara taking the lead. Jericho takes a step back. Sammy Guevara, he cuts a promo on Cody Rhodes saying he's tired of being held back and wants to take the top spot for himself. So, you know, Guevara's had to wait and wait and wait for his chances, whereas Cody Rhodes just gets them whenever he wants. Guevara's not happy about that. He wants to step up. He wants to prove that he can do it at the high level, and he wants to try and take down Cody Rhodes for himself. Get a bit of revenge for Chris Jericho, but also try and take Cody Rhodes' title dreams away from him. Um, 79 rated promo. So, Sam Guevara is proving that he can do it. He is proving that he can be a main event guy, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how Sammy and Cody go one-on-one -on -one at Fighter Fest. That will, that's when that match will take place, and I think it's gonna be, I think could be the match of the night. It's gonna be really, really good. Sting, he creates the Fighter Fest qualifying tournament. So, we, we talked about it earlier on, the eight-man tournament. We'll get into the matchups into that in a moment, but Sting has let everyone know that that tournament will be taking place. The Hardys, they took on the Hybrid 2 for a 58 rated match. Jeff Hardy, pretty good, 75. Matt Hardy, 65. Jack Evans, 50. And Helico, 51. About an 8 minute match. The Hardys picked up a quick win. So we tried to make this a high spots match. And the, the performances from the Hardys certainly benefited from it. Um, they just needed a bit more buzz from the crowd. So I suppose coming off a, a lousy women's match, I suppose, didn't quite help it out. But nonetheless, 58's not bad, and it's good to see the Hardys performing quite well for once. Uh, maybe we need to have them in more of these high spot scenarios. Maybe that's where their strengths may lie. So, uh, pretty good nonetheless, 58. Lance Archer took care of Billy Gunn for 54. Wanted to give Lance a big win, as he, of course, will be a part of the Fighter Fest qualifier. He and Jake Roberts cut a promo on the competition in the qualifier for 65. Not bad. Samoa Joe is here. He makes his Dynamite debut. Park confronts Joe and they cut a promo on one another and set up for their upcoming match for the TNT title. So, yeah, just hot shot in this feud. Obviously, we were going to have it as a long term. We we're going to have Joe probably take the TNT title, quite honestly, from Park. Well, that's all changed now. So, instead. This will just be, I don't even, I think we might have it on Rampage, the, the debut episode of Rampage, and just get it over and done with and get rid of Samoa and Joe, because I don't really want to waste much TV time on someone who isn't going to be here for long. You know, what's the point, right? No point getting him popularity. 
FTR took on Janela and Kiss and defeated them. They had an eight minute match as well, 54 rated. Well, FTR 73 apiece. The rest of them not so great. Uh, we try to make this the wild brawl because obviously we need a wild brawl every single episode. I figured FTR could do it. Janela, that's probably his specialty and it didn't quite work out too well. So we need a crowd that's ready for action. Unfortunately, we haven't had that yet. So 54 for that one, not so great. John Moxley cuts a promo and he says, look, I'm ready to end MJF once and for all and be the last man standing. So I'm thinking a last man standing match between MJF and Moxley for the debut episode of Rampage as the big world title match. And the winner gets the championship. The loser will has to wait and be out of the title mix for a while. So 83 rated there. Good promo from Moxley to help elevate that storyline. And our main event was Adam Page and Paul White. So I think this is Paul White's first match on Dynamite. Um, they took on um, Team Taz, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks. Brian Cage is part of the Fighter Fest qualifier, as is Adam Page. And we actually put Paul White in there too. So three out of the four uh, competitors, competitors in this one are part of the Fighter Fest qualifier. So that's why this one took place. Um, Paul White, 74. Adam Page, 78. Cage, 68. And Starks, pretty good, 49. Um, the only other option we could have done was Lance Archer teaming with Cage or Kenny Omega in terms of heels, but I figured why not give Ricky Starks the main event slot, even though it probably brought the match quality down. I think long term it's the way to go, more opportunity for Stark to prove himself uh, to be a potential top guy, so and, and, and it's an opportunity to gain some, uh, some popularity, which is exactly what we want. Um, Paul White gained a lot of popularity out of Double or Nothing. So we need to kind of have him utilize that. You know, we're not going to have him wrestle every week, but, um, you know, probably be a part of this tournament and then maybe go back to being, you know, a pretty, pretty part-time. But whilst he's got this popularity, we might as well have him at least utilize it, maybe put someone over. And um, maybe that could be a Brian Cage, maybe it could be a Miro or Kenny Omega, I don't know. But someone needs to be put over and, and get that popularity off Paul White and given to someone who needs it more. Speaking of Kenny Omega, he confronts Paige and White and promises to win the Fighter Fest qualifier post-match there for 80. So a promo to end out the show. Kenny Omega, he believes he's going to be the guy to get it done. Good promo and gives us a 66 rated show. Not bad. Not too bad. Nothing special. We had 2,500 people attend. Not a bad show. But I think this week the focus will be on Rampage. All right, as we get set for the debut edition of Rampage. Before we get there, Julia Hart, she's obviously the new manager for the Varsity Blondes. We've actually added her into our game and we've signed her to a contract. So I think that'll be a nice little addition to the Varsity Blondes. Um, obviously, we've uh, cut down Samoa Joe's contract so he can now be negotiated again by some other companies. I'm hoping that WWE re-sign him or maybe Japan or someone gets a hold of him so he's not sitting as a free agent. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. And so far, no one has contacted him with a new deal. So we'll see. But let's take a look at our Rampage show. So the announcers for the show, Mark Henry is going to be announced in real life. So I put him in there. Um, he did have 47 color commentary, I believe. So we bumped him to 62. Uh, I thought that might be okay. And we'll see how he goes in real life, whether we adjust that. But um, we also added Colt Cabana in there. Um, Cole Cabana has done some color commentary for us. He did uh, did some on Dark for a while, actually. Um, and he's not really doing a lot in terms of in-ring stuff, so I figured let's actually utilize him here. And I think he would add something, you know, fun and vibrant to the show. And we needed a play-by-play, -play, and I figured, okay, we'll start out with Jim Ross. Uh, I didn't want Excalibur on every show, so he was going to be the, other, the only other option. And I figured Jim Ross might actually do a little bit better, so we went with that instead. And we'll play around with that. I'm sure that will change. Dark has got Paul White, Taz, and Excalibur. And obviously Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, and Jim Ross as the Dynamite and Events crew. So that's the main trio there. So that's what we've got going on there. In terms of the actual show itself, now we don't have a fancy photo for it. So we just put an AEW you know, one just to be a little bit different, the Elevation logo. But it is Rampage. It's on every Friday. So it's going to be a live show every Friday. I know in real life they're doing maybe live every now and then. Uh, for, for us at the moment, we'll do it right now live. Um, and we're going to stick it as an A show, but that could change to be a B show depending how 
how big the ratings get for it. If it's ridiculous, we might cut it back. And also, you know, if the expectation becomes too much for us, um, we'll, we'll cut it back. So I really don't know how it's going to go. I, I know we've got some big stuff planned for the, the first couple episodes, but beyond that, you know, how are we going to maintain two quality hours of Dynamite and also a quality hour of Rampage? It's not going to be easy. You know, obviously Dark's got plenty of room to throw the, the, the younger crew in there. And as you can see with our episode of Dark this episode, it wasn't as strong as maybe usual. And that might have to be the case going forward. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll play around with it, but um, we may as well get into it and see what Rampage is going to bring to us here today. Um, so in terms of fans... Um, well, first of all, we've got a backstage incident. Let's move on from that. In terms of fans, um, they we are expecting two and a half thousand fans or so. So that's not too bad. I figure we, we should make this the first show that's, you know, on the road, I suppose. You know, the first show that we, we get out of the south uh, southeast because we've been there the entire time. So uh, I'm not sure where we'll go, but um, we'll pick a venue and we'll, we'll make this the first show that's on the road and it'll be Rampage. So let's get into it. The debut edition of AW Rampage. Two titles on the line. Let's get straight into it. Cody Rhodes took on John Silver on the pre-show to give Cody a win. 63 rated. Cody performed at 80. Silver, 34. Wanted to have the pre-show still remain strong. You know, thinking that this is our first show in a different state. We're in Dallas, Texas for the very first time here in the save. I figured, okay, let's have the pre-show. The dark matches still be good. So we wanted to have Cody Rhodes in a match here. To follow it up, as well, we had SCU take on Proud and Powerful for a 60-rated match. Proud and Powerful defeated SCU in about a 12-minute match. Uh, Kazarian, 42. Daniels, 50. Santana, 66. Ortiz, 65. Both really performing well. So, big win there for Proud and Powerful and another pretty solid match to close out the pre-show. On the main show, Park took on Samoa Joe for a 72-rated match. Park, 78. Samoa Joe, only 64, huh? Interesting. So maybe Samoa Joe, maybe we're not missing out on, on as much as we perhaps thought. But then again, let's not forget, Parky had his struggles when he first started. It took him a while to get going. Maybe it would take Samoa Joe a while to get going. But uh, nonetheless, Samoa Joe loses this match. Park defeats him, retains the championship. 72 rated match. Not too bad. Post match. Death Triangle sent a message to Samoa Joe and the rest of the locker room. They beat down Joe. They threw him out of the ring. So this is a way to really stamp the point that Death Triangle are here. They are one of the top groups now in AEW by taking out Samoa Joe. And that's probably a one and done for Joe. I can't see us using him again. So that's it. That's it for Samoa Joe, unfortunately. Cody Rhodes, he's back on the show. So he comes back out later. So two appearances from Cody. He says he welcomes the challenge of Sammy Guevara and he wouldn't want it any other way. He does not want to just be given a championship match. He wants to earn it. So if someone like Sam Guevara wants to get through him and, and take him on and you know challenge him for that for that right to be the number one contender, well, Cody Rhodes says bring it on. So it's 97 rated promo. Excellent from Cody Rhodes. Great way just to fill in a bit of time on this show. A bit of star power and advance one of our top storylines really, really well. Fantastic stuff. MJF, he trash talks Sting and Moxley ahead of the main event, so he's blaming Sting for all his troubles in life and just can't wait to be rid of Moxley from his, from his own life. So we are ready for the main event. It's going to be last man standing. Um, it's going to be Moxley versus MJF. Let's take a look. 79 rated. Okay, not too bad. All right, so we had MJF versus John Moxley, last man standing, about a 20-minute match. Um, MJF picks up the win, Wardlow of course interferes, and MJF defends the title for the first time in this championship reign. And that's it, that ends the feud, that ends the storyline between MJF and Moxley. It's been going on for months and months and months, lots of matches between these two. We're done, we're done with these two guys. Moxley loses the match, he can no longer challenge for the AEW World Championship again until MJF loses that belt. So that's one way to get rid of Moxley out of the title pitcher. And uh, MGF, look, he just kind of won, you know, thanks to the numbers game. He's got the pinnacle. He's got Wardlow to help him. Just too much for Moxley to overcome. 
Post-match, the pinnacle celebrate with MJF. MJF flips Sting, who was ringside for the match, gives him the bird, and just kind of says, look, this is my show. This is me. I'm taking over. I, I run this place, not you, Sting. So MJF with a big win, 73 rated, and gives us, wow, a 78 rated edition of Rampage. The first episode, the debut, is a double thumbs up from me. I'm happy with that. Um, probably the, the best episode we're ever going to have of Rampage, but at least we started off pretty well. All right, let's take a look at the ratings for Rampage. How did it score? 1.02 TV rating, 768,000 viewers. So that's a fair bit lower than Dynamite, but not a crazy amount, like 60, 70,000. Uh, good to get 2.2 thousand people in attendance. It's not crazy big. It's not like, okay, we're getting 10,000 people every single show, but 2,000 is solid. So I like that. Our first show on the road, it's it's a bit more realistic. The TV rating is probably a little bit too high, but the, at least the attendance for the fans is fairly realistic. So I'm happy with that. Now, obviously the big issue I've got with Rampage and the reason why we had a lot of matches on the pre-show is because we still need to have a storytelling, a steal the show, and a wild brawl, at least, on that show. So three matches all need that. And it's not easy getting that all the time. So we're going to have to probably play around with the product settings because it's just getting a little bit ridiculous needing those types of matches every single show. It's just annoying, if anything. So if we can cut that back, maybe take care of it, get rid of the steal the show, and just have a wild brawl of storytelling, I feel like that would work out a little bit better. But we'll have to play around with that nonetheless. Um, but uh, lots of success here in this first edition of Rampage. I'm excited about the future of it. It's pretty easy to book. It's only one hour of TV, you know, two, three matches. That's all it needs to be. A couple of promos. That's pretty easy stuff. So what we're going to try and do going forward is we're going to try and cut back down a little bit on the talking and explaining a lot of things and just kind of run through all the results a little bit quicker and um, try and cover more content in the episode. So that way we can at least get through the three shows and we're not having these episodes blow out to 40, 45 minutes plus each time. So I'll try and work on that for next time. But thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. The future's good. I'm really excited. We, you know, we've got a whole new show to play around with. Fighter Fest is coming up. Some exciting stuff to take care of coming up soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.